How many of you know that even a hard word is still a good word? And and I've got th- this morning is is some might consider it kind of a hard word, but if we'll respond to it right, God will do some wonderful things out of it. And and I, I I promise you that everything that I have planned for the rest of the year is going to be jump up and shout and dance and glory hallelujah. We're going to have joy of Christmas. We're we're going to just, we're going to end on a very high note this year. But in this series, the Tabernacle of David, I actually didn't intend for it to be but two messages long. And when I got into it, I realized that it was very important why something had to be rebuilt. Because if it had to be rebuilt, that meant something happened to it. It's as important that we know what happened to it to cause it to fall down as it is to rebuild it. Because if we try to rebuild it not knowing why it fell down in the first place, we might commit the same error that they committed and what we build would be lost again. I I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting older. I don't like to admit it, but every time I look in the in the mirror, my hair's a little bit grayer, my ears are getting a little bit longer, and I have to keep the nose hairs trimmed out even more. Everything's just everything. I, I realize, hey, we're real in here, all right. There ain't no use in hiding. I mean, everybody's got their stuff, you know. Uh, parts is parts, and uh, and I'm, I'm realizing that that I'm, I'm not. Don't misunderstand me. I don't have one foot in the grave or anything like that. But I'm understanding that my productive years of really being able to get on and get with it in, in, in a physical way. I, I, I don't have 30, 40 years like I had before. So I, I, I don't want to, what, what I do, what I establish, what I believe the Lord wants us to do, I, I don't want to mess it up because I don't want to have to go back and rebuild it again and again and again. So when we talk about rebuilding the tabernacle of David, we've got to understand why the Ark of the Covenant came out of the tabernacle of Moses to begin with. We need to understand what happened to get it into the tabernacle of David and why the New Testament with the Gentiles coming in with the Jews. And remember in Acts 15, we've got the scripture up here. Um, this is James's response, apostolic response to, to dirty Gentile dogs coming into the church. Because you have to remember for the first 15 to 20 years, the church was largely Jewish. It was a Jewish church. It was a Messianic church. They still had their Messianic, I mean, they still had their Jewish practices with Jesus. And when Paul and Barnabas began to go out and win pure Gentiles, heathens, people with no Jewish roots, cared nothing about Moses, cared nothing about the law, none of those things were of any issue to them, that they were, they were totally God, godless pagan worshipers, and the Holy Spirit was using Paul and Barnabas and many others to go into these pagan cities and win pagans to the Lord. Jesus Christ. So you had Gentiles coming into the church. What was a Jewish church going to do? Big deal, Acts 15. I want to tell you something. Church history could be entirely different if it weren't for Acts 15. And that was a very uncomfortable council meeting because you ha- you still had people who believed that it was to be Jewish, that it was to be a tradition, that, that God was just a God of the Jews and that He came to save the Jews. And, and you had to proselyte in. What I mean by that is this. You had to become a Jew to be saved in practice. You had to be a Jew with Jesus. That's what the Judaizers were. And the whole debate in Acts 15 was this. was No, they don't have to become a Jew in practice. They just have to receive the Jewish Messiah. They have to receive Jesus, the, the carpenter, the son of the living God, the, born, the, the, the one that was risen from the dead. They have to receive Him as their personal Savior. And that and that alone is what allows them to come into the church. It was a big, big deal. And after they got through that council, they came out, and this is part of what the, James had to have Scripture. They wanted Scripture. How can, how, what does God look, what is God doing? And they needed Old Testament Scripture, just like you need a Scripture for everything you believe God's telling you to do. And they came out with this response, and this is what James said. Acts fifteen sixteen says, After these things I will return, and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen... And I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it. Now I have a time to go back over all my sermon from uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. But the issue is this. We have to understand what the tabernacle of David was before we can rebuild it, before it can be rebuilt in the church. 
What you actually have in the Old Testament with the tabernacle of David is a very real picture of what the New Testament church was to be in the Old Testament. You see, what's interesting here is this, is that the Holy Spirit didn't direct them to a Scripture that said to rebuild the tabernacle of Moses. It said rebuild the tabernacle of David. That's a big deal. Why? Because Moses was the man. Mo Moses was the prophet. If you were going to follow one prophet, you had to follow Moses. Moses was the one who did it all. Moses was the one that got the law. Moses was the one that got the, the, the tabernacle built. For hundreds of years, the Ark of the Covenant rested in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle of Moses. But when it came to the New Testament understanding of what the church was to be, the apostle said it's the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David. Why? That's what we want to talk about this morning and what got us to that place um, in history. Now, as the church began to become more and more Gentile, the largely Jewish Christian church needed this scriptural basis that they were rebuilding what God did in the Old Testament with the tabernacle of David. What did He do? He took the Ark of the Covenant, which had been lost to the Philistines for a short season, and then had been in a house. Everybody say a house. God ain't afraid to live in your house. God's fine wherever He's welcome. And, and He came out of the tabernacle of Moses in, in, in the ark. And the Philistines captured Him. And the Philistines, remember, they couldn't handle Him because judgment began to break out on them. So they sent Him back to the Israelites. And the Israelites took Him and put Him back in a house not back to the tabernacle of Moses. Interesting. Interesting. They didn't take it back to the tabernacle of Moses. They left it in a house. Why? Because the priesthood was, the high priest was gone. There was no priest back at the tabernacle. Eli and his sons died, remember? So that lineage ended. And even though there was another lineage that was going to be appointed by David to still be at the tabernacle of Moses, even though it was falling down, there was no high priest. And where there's no priest, God can't reside. That's why He needs you and I. He, he needs priests upon the earth to minister to and for Him. And by the way, you just got revelation. It's not in the notes. He's looking for priests that will minister to him and for him. And they were no longer there in the tabernacle of Moses. Now, I'm for the church, okay? I'm, I'm for church. Tell your neighbor, pastor's for church. And there are a lot of great churches out there, but there's a lot of dead churches out there that have a name that they live, but God's nowhere near. And a lot of the old, listen, a lot of the old line denominational churches, their, their tabernacle's fallen down. Not only is the glory of God gone, but the same sin of Eli and Hophnius and Phinehas has entered in. There's perversion, sexual immorality, Misuse of sacrifices, misuse of funds. God's no longer in that house. But the ritual and the form is still going on. And this is really more for next week's message than, than it is this one. But since, since Charlie kind of released that word by, by the Holy Spirit, I'm going, to, I'm going to follow it for just a second. When it, when it comes to um, what God's doing upon the earth today... You've got an old rote religious system without the presence of God on a hill called Shiloh. And you've got another church that's on another hill in Jerusalem that has the presence of God. And what you have, and I'm just, this is just prophetic, I'm totally off the notes now. What's happening on the earth today is the old mosaic type church that's lost the glory, still got a crowd, still has a following, 
because my mama's 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 granddaddy started the church and because my great uncle Billy and his his wife started that church and and we've been to this church we've been going to this my family's been in this church for 75 years 50 years and th- that's all they got it's a building they're going to but they got no presence and, and yet people feel obligated now you got to hear this people feel obligated to that old system because it's always been it's all they've ever known I, this this is hard I want you to understand the transition that was taking place from Moses to the tabernacle of David. Moses had been it for hundreds of years. But it was in shatters. The priesthood had gone bad. And the God of the box took His box out of the Holy of Holies and that which was no longer fit for Him to reside in. How many of you know you can't steal God? The Philistines stole God. They had no idea what they were getting into when the Lord allowed them to carry Him off. You see, here's the, here's the thing. As soon as word came back that that the Israelites had been defeated and that the ark had gotten had, had was was stolen. Phineas' wife was giving birth and she died while giving birth and she declared Ichabod, which means the glory has left the house. Look what it says here. And she called the boy Ichabod saying, the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God was taken. Now it's important. I want to show you two things here. First is this. Why was the ark taken? Why was the ark allowed to be stolen? It was because of the father-in-law, her father-in-law and her husband. Because sin entered in to the priesthood to the point that it would not repent and God could not allow that priesthood to minister to him any longer or for him any longer. Now, in her death, in in having the child, she died, and she declared Ichabod, which means the glory has departed Israel. Now, can I play with that for a minute? Will will, will you let me have a little preacher's? You know I like to mess with you. My question is, did it really? Oh, she said it did. But did it really? Can you really steal God's glory? His. His. Can the glory ever be destroyed? Mm -mm. It it, it doesn't happen. So what I want you to understand is this is from from a human perspective. Now, here again, work with me. From a human perspective, because the box was gone, God was gone, and the glory was gone. Not understanding that God won't stay in your box. And just because He won't work for you when you've got the box doesn't mean that he's not still working. Because, you see, here's, here's the issue. They thought that even in the midst of their sin, I'm in 1 Samuel 6 now, they thought, 1 Samuel 5, 4, 5, and 6, they thought that if they could just take the God of the box into battle with them in spite of their sin, didn't matter that Eli wasn't dealing with situations in the nation, wasn't calling for repentance. Didn't matter that Hophni and Phineas were, were stealing the sacrifices that were coming in and were sleeping with the women at the gate of the, of the tabernacle when they came. Sexual immorality was blatant. It was a mess. Didn't matter that all that sin was going on in the camp. They still believed that if they carried the Ark of the Covenant into battle with them, that God would fight for them, that He would go to battle with them, and they would win a victory. So they went and they got the box and they brought it out and they brought it into the, into the battle and they brought it in, the Bible says, with a great shout. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it was a shout. It was such a shout that it says it caused the earth to shake. They carried it into battle and got whooped. Now that's southwest Virginia that they became defeated. And not only were they defeated, they were soundly defeated thousands died 
the ark was carried off by the Philistines and was quote unquote captured. <laughs> Can I just tell y'all God did was he went into stealth mode. <laughs> 